from my perspective, the wild woman archetype is, is someone who is in tune with what is, right? Who is working with the energies at hand, who is connected to the earth, and therefore the earth being a symbolism of their physical body. So they're embodied in their own energy, right? They're not just stuck in the head, they're embodied, they're moving with the flow of what's around them. And they're really creating a united front, right? It's all about unity of connecting people together, right? The energy of wild, which is why it's, it felt so aligned for me to take this on as a brand, is wild has gotten such a bad rap. When you think of wild, you think of a woman on top of a bar doing shots okay. and washing her breasts. And again, that's society sort of condemning this part of us. But when we're wild, we are really in tune with our instinctual, intuitive nature. We are going by what our body and being are guiding us towards versus what we think by societal and conditioned programming we're supposed to be or supposed to do or supposed to look like. Welcome my guest, Rachel Pringle. She is an actor, writer, creator of the Wild Woman Experience, a sensuality and dynamic Tantra teacher and mystic. She has over 15 years of experience in human development, healing modalities, and somatic embodiment practices. She specializes in sensual embodiment, conscious communication alchemy, self-intimacy, mysticism in the Tantric realm, and love in partnership. Well, welcome to another episode on Passion Love Pursuit Podcast. I get to welcome Rachel Pringle. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. And I'm seeing your last name, correct? Pringle, yes. Like the okay. tangent. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a really cute last name. I love it. Well, I'm so happy to have you here as we were talking about. I, I know you talk about so many different subjects and I really want to focus around harnessing sexuality, sensuality, and that wild woman archetype. So we'll go really deep into that and we'll see where we flow. Uh, I'm just really excited to dive in. But first to, of course, welcome you to the audience. If you could share your journey and who is Rachel Pringle anyhow. Oh, this is beautiful. What kind of perfect segue into that. Um, you know, I've, I've been in this work for so, so long. I've always been fascinated by spirituality and mysticism and sort of the unknown mysterious energy that is present always. And at a very young age, I came into my sexuality and sensuality, I would say, you know, <laughs> but before I was even seven years old, I was learning how to masturbate and feel these things. And as I got older, I would say in my teens, it was it was a challenge to sort of recognize how I could harness this energy. And in my late teen and early twenties, I got into some, some trouble, you should say, by expressing my sexuality and sensuality in a way that created destruction or intimidated people or really just created disconnection. And so I shut that down, which I have found now in, in all my years of work, that this is not just my story, that this is pretty much every woman's story is we all had a moment where we shut down our lower chakras from our higher chakras. And then when I met my husband, when I was 26, it was really this journey of, of finding my divine feminine. I always felt like I was feminine, but because I was a woman, but not recognizing that there's two energies sort of at play. And I was really operating so much from my masculine. I was living in New York City. I was very go, go, go. I was very, um, I would say controlled and rigid. And this journey was really all about what I've now coined, how to teach women to be responsibly wild, right? Mm -hmm. How to harness and cultivate our sexual and sensual energy so that we can use it as a gift to the world, as our a radiance into the world that is creating massive transformation and change in a positive, uplifting, enlightening manner versus sort of destruction and chaos and volatility, which is what I find that most women experience, myself included. So it's been such an exceptional uh, experience to, you know, the first 
creating Wild Woman was really intentionally for myself. I was like, I need to create something where I can freely exercise what it is that I'm feeling in a sacred, safe container so that I can allow my feminine energy to, to reveal itself through me. So it's been incredible. And, and now that I feel like I've really grounded into it, it's just my absolute passion to share it with the world. So beautiful. So beautiful to hear how you articulate all that. I love it. Well, okay. So as you mentioned, very often we learn what we actually need for ourselves. And then when we, when we're like, oh, I get it now, I want to share it with the world. And so obviously you're doing that in all the teachings you now share in your offerings. But so just to ask you one specific question, if you were to define who you are today, who are, who is Rachel Pringle? I would say a permission to liberate people to be their highest, most celebratory expression. Mm, Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And you also mentioned how, so uh, as you were feeling that you were, um, that you felt like you were holding back that sexual energy and you were suppressed and everything, how did you, number one, recognize that? Because some people might not even recognize they have this block. So how did you recognize that? And then what were the steps you took to kind of remove those layers that possibly were suppressing you? Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. The first moment that actually pops into my mind was um, making love with my husband and recognizing that there was this block towards deeper intimacy. You know, I was closing my eyes. I was, and he was helping point it out. He's like, when you're in pleasure, you're very internal, right? You're, you're not sharing this energy with me because I was under this sort of subconscious illusion that this energy wasn't safe and that it was bad and destructive and chaotic and volatile. And so he really is such a pivotal part in my entire evolution of giving me permission to, to express using my voice, using my sounds and to, to really embody the sense of wild when you're in a safe container. And I think the, the energy really is having this awareness that none of us are taught any of this, no. right? We're not taught how to harness our energy, how to communicate, how to express our emotions, how to express our anger, our rage, our shame. And so at this point, I was also very deep in my spiritual practice. We would practice uh, Kriya for two hours every single day. And I was deep in my self-love meditation and this download for wild woman came through because I was going on the internet and I've said this in so many different podcasts and this was years ago now, almost 10 years ago, and it wasn't as prevalent as it is now. Thank goddess. Right. And it was all from a man's perspective Mm -hmm. and from my perspective, it was rigid. And even my spiritual practice at that time felt rigid. And I was really craving this sense of fluidity and sensuality and freedom and the ability to understand that my version of sexuality and sensuality is valid right there's so much out there around sexuality obviously pornography is a huge one that's sort of teaching women that this is the way to be sexual and so it created this subconscious sort of like contraction in me that how I'm expressing is wrong or not good enough or bad. And, and so I created this sort of structure that gave a, a container, a safe conscious container to be in the freedom of wild expression, to especially be in my rage and my anger, to, to speak using my voice because the voice and the throat are directly connected to our pussy and our root chakra and to create that space where where the fluidity of my body could be the leader versus what my mind really wanted. And that was just a game changer for me through that act. Like we spoke about before, you know, teaching others as part of my human design is the way that I integrate, you know, so as any time I receive something, the next thing I do is teach upon it because I know that that's how I embody it fully. Oh, that's so beautiful. That's so great. And you mentioned how so much of society kind of forms these beliefs that this is the box we're supposed to fit in. And this is what's right. That's wrong. So I know you talk about the dark and the light side and how both of those can coexist at the same same time that dark doesn't necessarily mean evil light, you know, obviously light is good, but 
but you could integrate them both. So if you could share with us, what's your view on that? And, you know, to give people a different perspective of how to look at it possibly. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think I would actually say from my perspective, it's imperative to unite the dark and the light. You know, it's that quintessential yin and yang symbol. You know, that's how we are intended to be. And again, through the programming and conditioning of our society and through religion, mostly it's our darkness has been condemned as evil and demonic. And so we are sort of for the beginning of our lives in constant resistance to this thing, which means what we resist will persist. And it comes out in these convoluted ways, which therefore continues to confirm that this thing is bad, mm. right? So it's not really associated as this beautiful, sacred, um, holy thing, which I believe it is. And when we can really make friends with those parts of us, that's when our light becomes even more powerful. And then the opposite sort of end of the spectrum is the light, which I think we see so much probably in the in the earlier years of the spiritual community really blasting is this sort of attachment to ascending and enlightenment and everything is like how to leave the body how to be in your higher chakras and i think that's incredible but you're missing the the understanding and realization that we are in a physical body we've chosen to come here to be embodied and when we combine these lower chakras with our higher chakras in alignment, that's when we really access our full life force Shakti energy. And when we focus that into something, it's we're unstoppable. Mm. I love how you express everything. It, it makes you feel like, or when I'm listening to you, I feel so empowered. Like all this, it just, it, it's something that you want to really absorb and take in truly. And I love how you express everything. So I, I know I really want to uh, bring forward the idea of this wild woman archetype. So if you could kind of share for people that don't know, what is the wild woman archetype? Because I think a lot of people have a misconception, possibly what it might be. Yes. Well, for me, from my perspective, the wild woman archetype is, is someone who is in tune with what is right? Who is working with the energies at hand, who is connected to the earth and therefore the earth being a symbolism of their physical body. So they're embodied in their own energy, right? They're not just stuck in the head, they're embodied, they're moving with the flow of what's around them. And they're really creating a united front, right? It's all about unity of connecting people together, right? The energy of wild, which is why it's, it felt so aligned for me to take this on as a brand is wild has gotten such a bad rap. When you think of wild, you think of a woman on top of a bar doing shots okay. and washing her breasts. And again, that's society sort of condemning this part of us. But when we're wild, we are really in tune with our instinctual intuitive nature. We are going by what our body and being are guiding us towards versus what we think by societal and conditioned programming we're supposed to be or supposed to do or supposed to look like. And it's interesting because it can look similar. You know, a wild woman can also be on top of our dancing, but it is an invitation for everyone in the entire room to embody that energy versus look at me, I need validation, I need attention because I trade my sexual and sensual power for power or money or attention or validation. And so this is really isolation and the wild woman archetype really embodied is liberating everyone who's around. So creating the safety for you to meet another person, woman or a man or, or they or them to feel completely at home with who they are because you are completely at home and you are mirroring that back to them. That's so beautiful. And would you say that because we all or us women and also men, we have these archetypes and they're, they're all a part of us. Am I correct? Like every archetype is a part of us. It's just harnessing that power of that archetype, which I know uh, the wild woman archetype, it seems like it's mostly embodiment. Like it, it is, it is body expressed. Am I correct? Yes. That would be my perspective. It's, it's so beautiful. You know, again, recognizing that there's been this sort of preconceived notion for so many years that spirituality exists 
just in consciousness sort of up here and we're missing the element of this 3d world and and we want to bring the consciousness that is here dropped down and grounded into our body and then we can really transmit it as an energetic you know frequency that will open people much more than idea or philosophy like you can people always say they'll forget what you said but they'll never forget how you made them feel mm-hmm. yep yep and so you were talking about when we were going back to you feeling sexually uh, suppressed and everything when you were younger for anybody that feels or is starting to kind of get the clue like oh maybe i am holding myself back maybe i'm not really embodying who I am, or I don't feel free to embody who I am. What's kind of the beginning steps to kind of number one, recognize that, that awareness, like really what's going on and then how to start the process of really cultivating that wild woman. Mm. The first immediate thing is the safety to express our anger, rage, and sadness, because that's what we're feeling, right? When we have lived under a mask for so long, there is this anger that's that's in us and it's really right on the surface. Like if you're just poked the wrong way or said something to you, it's like right there and we're, we're hysterical because there's so much um, self-inflicted aggression. I wanna do this, but I can't do this. I feel like doing this, but society tells me no. So we're operating from this sort of stagnant, rigid place and what we really need to do is give ourselves a safe space to fully express. And I think oftentimes rage and anger gets this bad rap because usually it's pointed towards someone or towards a thing. And that's where it sort of gets us into trouble. And that's why for me, it's so imperative to continuously create sacred safe spaces where you're just expressing it freely. Right. So for me, that rage practice is one of my favorite things to do. I do that in pretty much every single course, every single aspect of breath work is the freedom to express using sound, using our body shaking and and giving ourselves permission also to express to people that we felt have inadvertently held us back or we have chosen to decide they're going to hold us back to be able to express it to them is as an imaginary person so that it's that noise, that chaotic energy that gets condensed in our physical body can be free. And then once that's been freed, there is this spaciousness that equals a direct connection to our intuitive voice, Mm. right? And then we're able to hear our own truth, right? Because so many of us are living based off of an external authority. This is what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to act, look, be, express. And so to have that spaciousness and to be able to hear our own inner authority is I think one of the greatest gifts that we can ever receive because it's visceral and it's a different voice than what we've experienced in the past. And it's sort sort of always telling us that we're wrong. It's sort of deep in self-criticism and negative narratives and internal dialogue. And then all of a sudden you're greeted with this voice that's like, you're it. I love you. You have this power. And it, I mean, I just got chills when I, when I said it, because it's all of us know it, we know it instinctively. Right. So then when we return to that place, it's almost like everything is cleared. Our power is on and it's like, get fucking ready. Right. Here we go. And then, Really the last piece of how to continuously harness and cultivate that is consistency. Consistency is key for everything, right? Practice makes progress. Practice is creating a, basically a sacred safe space within you to be your own guru, to be your own master healer, to have your own back, to relinquish this idea that you need someone else to help you but you can help yourself. Then you can ask for help and it comes from a totally different space, right? It comes from an empowered yeah. space versus a disempowered space. And I think that all of us really, truly, any human being, we're sort of grappling with this power battle our whole lives because we're constantly thinking that power comes from outside of us. When power really exists in an infinite well within us, we just have to basically turn the faucet on. Yeah. 
Oh, so well said. And I think a lot of people probably know this now that we have trauma that gets trapped in our body and emotions that it has to come out for you to fully, fully, fully heal. (laughs) Otherwise it will always come out one way or the other. And so I know some of the practices you do, it, it is that, you know, like the shaking, the using your voice and everything. So I think you have five ways to release trauma. What are the, the practices you have in your courses? Basic. I always use breath work. My husband has created a breath work modality called pyramid breath. That is, was a direct download for him. And that has been such a profound tool for us. Mm. The, the energy purely alone of using your breath to heal yourself, which again is leading us into this energy of we are the master healers. We're returning to the infinite divine intelligence of our own body, which again, makes us feel so empowered. So breath work is a, an absolute must for me. I, I do breath work every single day. I did it just before this call. And then shaking, you know, shaking out the body. We see this in nature. If an animal is getting right. into Awful. They shake their body. It's helping to release that sort of stagnant, pent up energy using the voice, right? Specifically as women, this is so vital to return to that empowered place of being able to speak our truth. Obviously, there's many different realms of it. Learning how to consciously use our language is one of them, but really creating space where you can use your voice to channel your energy. It's, it's um, to scream to, you know, I did a, an amazing workshop in Estonia and some of these women had never screamed their entire life. Oh, sure. It was so because you're told that it's, it's obviously like not good. <laughs> don't, don't get, and you call it sacred rage. So that that's one of the things you're talking about is actually like letting it all out and screaming it if you need to. Right. And, and here's the thing, everyone always needs to. Wow. You know, like that's it's and it doesn't it doesn't need to be that you're screaming in in any particular way. It's just being able to give ourselves permission to express at a volume that invigorates and activates and awakens us, right? Mm-hmm. And that's why the idea of sacred rage is you're not pointing it at a person. You are creating a space and you're really just in a dance with the divine and the divine can wants it wants your full expression. It's going to meet you with more love. So absolutely sacred rage again and again and again. And then embodiment, movement, dance, you know, being in the body has been absolute medicine for me to going back to what I said previously, to find our own unique expression of sensual energy, right? And sensuality, the reason why I, you know, I call it sacred sensuality is because we're using our senses. We're bringing every part of us online to move as one because we spend most of our lives sort of disjointed. We compartmentalize all these different things and we're feeling scattered when our body really is so deeply present. And so when we put on a song and we're invited into a particular archetype or a particular emotion or expression, and we allow our body to guide us there, it is true freedom. Because again, we're letting go of our mind. We're letting our consciousness ripple into our body and letting our our body consciousness guide us, which is what it really desires to do. And then the last thing is pleasure, 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 pleasure. (laughs) Really giving ourselves permission, especially as women, again, to to feel pleasure, to um, bathe in our own pleasure, to recognize that our pleasure is for us, not for the man or the partner or an external thing, that it is feeding our creativity, our our endeavors, our, our life force energy, our expression, and being able to find that sweet energy that is you and your own pleasure. Mm. You're, you're conducting it on your own. You are harnessing it. You are cultivating it on your own, which is deeply empowering. I think that's so important for women to hear because I think that some people, some women think that pleasure is, is always for the man and yes, to fully, I mean, as everybody knows, you need to love yourself first before you could love another fully 
and completely, right? So that's a way of integrating the love for yourself is allowing yourself to receive pleasure in any form that is desirable to you, right? So, and really allowing that. And, you know, it's, it is challenging, I think, for some women. Again, that's why we have people like you <laughs> teaching how to, you know, break down the walls that is holding you back from receiving that. Yeah. And um, you spoke early on about the divine feminine, and I would love everybody listening to, and again, that I know this episode is mostly geared for women, but of course it's so great for men to learn about women. And, you know, it's, it goes, it's, Absolutely. you know, it's, it goes in benefit for both. Right. So the divine feminine also needs to work in, you know, in, in sequence with the divine masculine. So if you could share, what is, what does it mean to really embody the divine feminine? Mm. I'm like so overwhelmed with joy that this is what we get to do now. Uh, you know, and it's great because it's, I think it's so much more present today. And I think, I think a common conversation that's being had right now, especially in a lot of women stepping into CEO positions and being an entrepreneur, of course, when you're an entrepreneur, you operate a lot in the masculine. And today, I think people are recognizing that there's something off and we need to return to this balance and this, this flow of both, yes. because of course, men and women have both those energies. I know for myself, actually, this is kind of why I want to have this conversation. I have been operating for a long time in my masculine and a lot of things I love are actually in my masculine. So I'm actually trying to return back to my divine feminine. So you know, again, we like to learn what we need. So <laughs> that's partly why I'm having this conversation, but anyways, not to interrupt. So the divine feminine. <laughs> I think it's great. I love what you brought up because I talk about this all the time is I agree with you. I spent most of my life in, in my masculine energy and it's beautiful. Masculine energy is incredible. It creates structure and focus and precision and um, helps you really create the space for your divine feminine to be free and to be wild. And a lot of the time when we're doing this work, there's this idea that, okay, my masculine is this high. And so in order to get my feminine, I need to take down my masculine, mm -hmm. right? That's sort of this misconception that we carry. And from my perspective, it's if your masculine is here and it's working for you, that's fucking great. It just means bring up more femininity really. And the divine feminine is being able to listen to the body because that's the divine feminine exists within all of us. And it is that whisper that's there. That's, you know, expressing or guiding you into the forms of pleasure that will really expand our radiance. Right. And that's the thing is like talking about CEOs and there's this sort of misconception that a woman can be weak because they have emotions, but no love is the most powerful force that exists on the planet. And when we learn to channel our love with precision, it is the most powerful thing. And we can create so much more change with that force using the force that is dominance, right? That is sort of criticizing and putting each other down, which is sort of like the masculine old way of being. And the masculine energy wants that too. There's nothing more powerful than when we're aligned, right? When we're aligned with ourselves and when we're aligned with masculine feminine energies, no matter your sex. And so I think that divine feminine energy is really calling us to be still and to listen and to flow with the pleasures of life, right? The pleasures of life are our sensations, our sensuality. And going back to what we previously talked about, pleasure is not just about sexuality. It's sensuality, which is the pleasure of taking a shower, the pleasure of eating food, the pleasure of reading a book, of listening to music, of taking a walk, of breathing air, of you know cooking food, of getting dressed in the morning and being able to immerse ourselves in the moment. And mm -hmm. so for me, when I think about these two energies, this you know divine masculine energy is creating this spaciousness and seeing what I just said, it's creating this spaciousness. So the, the feminine energy has to create for the expansion to happen. 
So it's really our sort of job to be in this like juicy, beautiful energy on a consistent basis, like doing the things that activate and awaken that part of us where we feel alive, we feel enlivened, we feel ignited and letting that be our practice because it will only equate to more space, more creation, more space, more creation. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And you spoke about sacred spaces, which is so critical. What is, uh, or what can you recommend for creating your own sacred space, maybe sharing yours and possibly, I don't know if you have a morning practice, evening practice, but just to kind of hear what's yours and then what is your tips for creating one? Mm, beautiful. Well, I'm, I, my whole space is sacred. Yeah. Um, we have mini altars. I mean, you can see them back here. These are all like mini altars. We have a huge altar right here. So I like the idea an altar really is calling our presence forward to create a sacred space, right? To call forward things that ignite that sense of expansiveness and mystery and, and spirituality that, that, wants to be lived through us. So for me, it's like all over the house and I clear my energy all the time, right? So what just came to me is this idea again, that so many of us are walking around feeling disempowered, feeling like we're at effect of the world and we're losing this access point to our innate power. And so I really always for all of my girls and all of my courses, empowering us to recognize that we are the creator of our reality. And so if you want to clear your energy, do that. And I do it literally all the time, all day. You know, as soon as I wake up, I'm doing sage and I'm doing Palo Santo and I do a clearing mantra, which is whatever energies, entities, beings, cords, or connections that are not here for my highest good, I command them to be removed right now. You know, and I, I use that kind of thing. I set the space. I'm always aware of my space, which therefore makes it sacred, right? Beautiful. Because you're aware of this like holy energy. And yes, I have a very, very devotional um, morning practice with my husband. We practice every single day. We very, I would say we're, we're like modern day yogis. We have that the yogi household. We have friends come over and practice with us almost every single day. And it, it's oh, breath work, meditation, movement based, really, First thing in the morning, you know, after you've done your things, first thing in the morning, cultivating that energy and letting that be sort of the, the, the energy that goes through your entire day. And then another thing that my partner and I do all the time is we spend like 90% of our conversation in gratitude, mm. where we're our appreciation. We are always appreciating ourselves one another, our friends. We do gratitude every single day, whether it's just with us or with our group of friends. And so again, it's calling our presence forward to recognize that this moment will never be again. Mm. And to sort of realize, you know, this is something that's very present with me. I think the older that I get, I'm 35 now, that time is so precious. It yes. really is like the number one thing, right? So how to be discerning with our energy and with our time so that we are continuously coming back to this spacious energy that allows you therefore to channel divinity and sacred you know, spirituality to come through you and guide us in the moment, because that's really what the universe wants. It wants to be working in tandem with us all the time. Yeah. And you speak about uh, breaking patterns. So if, uh, you know, obviously creating this sacred routine is a good way to break unhealthy patterns, but is there anything else you could say to that for somebody that, you know, is obviously listening to this episode to really learn how to embody their sensuality, sexuality, and embrace fully who they are and express it in their own authentic way. So breaking those patterns that have not been serving them, what would you suggest? There's three things. Number one is the awareness. Like awareness is, is it, right? When we can see that there is something, a narrative or a pattern that is blocking us from what we feel we want to be, that's number one, right? Okay, I'm aware that I'm doing this thing or I'm not doing this thing and I'm in this pattern. And then the two other things is recognizing that we are habitual beings. Right. So in order to break a habit, if you're learning something, 
you need to practice that in the first 48 hours or you'll lose it. Right. So if you read a book or you, you know, are listening to a podcast or, or watching something and you feel inspired as soon as it's done or later on that day, put on a song, shake it out, do some breath work, you know, pyramid of breath is all over the, all over the internet and get into it immediately. And then this, the third aspect of that is make it consistent, right? It takes 21 to 30 days to create a new habit. And then I remember one more thing, the realization that when we are learning something new, we are going to fail or fall down, right? And, and the way that I like to view failure is the only way we can actually fail is if we try something, we're not good at it and we stop and never do it again. Failure in the other way is just fine tuning and refining and understanding and learning, okay, this is how I'm gonna do it. So the metaphor I always like to use is when you're riding a bike, you know when you're riding a bike that you're, you're gonna fall. So prepare yourself for that and don't let it stop you. Let it be an exciting moment where you get to realize, okay, when I turn the bike like this, you know, and I, and I pu push on the brake, I, you know, I can fall. So the next time I'm going to turn a little less, I'm going to let go of the brake and let it be this really exciting thing. I think that the energy to have that's most important is curiosity and discovery. What does this feel like? And to notice, Whenever you're doing any of these things, shaking, breath work, dancing, using your voice, practicing pleasure, how do you feel before and how do you feel afterwards? All of these things are, are visceral feelings. It's different than when you read a book and you can sort of intellectually understand, which is amazing and I love reading all the fucking time, but it's different than when you can feel it in your body, when you get those chills, when you scream for the first time and then you feel that spaciousness you're like oh fuck okay this is real and then create that over and over and over again so it becomes this new pattern that will inadvertently replace the old pattern no oh, that's great i love that those tips especially and speaking about your relationship i know you speak a lot of the, uh, the relationship with your husband which is a sacred union and for anybody that possibly whether you're in a relationship or not and they desire to create that, you know, that sacred union with their partner and possibly let's say they're not in complete alignment, that there's something off, how to, as the woman, just speaking to the woman right now, uh, how could they start to cult, like bring that into the relationship mm -hmm. if it's not there yet? Like, uh, I know you share communication, alchemy is key, which I completely believe, but what would you say to that for somebody that wants to create that type of union with their partner or future? Yeah. Partner? I mean, communication is like, I would say after the movement based practices that I do, you know, sound and breath communication is the fucking key to our heaven on earth because neurolinguistics are what create our reality, right? What is happening in our inner world is there or a holographic reflection of our external world. And so when we can embrace this, this energy of understanding communication in our own inner world, how we're communicating to ourselves, how we're speaking to ourselves, how we're thinking about ourselves, and then start to integrate that into our partnership, right? We are the blanket statement of there is no perfect relationship. You know, this is a, this is sort of like a fucking falsity illusion that lives in our society. You are going to do the work because that's what relationship is. And it's, it's incredible when you have the willingness to, to go with it and to, and to ride that cosmic wave, right? We are meant to be together in these unions and learn and grow and heal, right? And so when we can use our languaging to understand each other, to discover what's happening in their inner world, what's happening in our inner world, combining our worlds together, creating our, our value that we're striving towards. It becomes this, um, this beautiful dance together versus this separate sort of thing. I need you to do this in order for me to feel like this. I need you to act like this for me to feel like this. And we're sort of both operating from our trauma, which is totally normal. And communication helps us speak about our trauma and our wounding from a removed space versus 
from the actual trauma, which is puts us into a trauma response and we, we can't even think straight, we can't even speak straight. So communication is really what I like to call, what we've been calling it is like learning how to be a love Jedi, how to master energy, how to read a room, how to inquire deeper, how to feel into your partner or your future partner and create intimacy with trust, with connection, with communicating about the hard things. And in order to do that, we actually need the tools of how to do that. Exactly. And you teach this and you, you have a, so you have so many offerings. Uh, obviously I know you have the wild women experience. Can you share what that is? And then a couple of your other offerings that are available now, just out of curiosity. Yes. So wild woman is my first offering and I actually haven't, I haven't done it in a while. Um, I've been, I've used, the same structural tools and sort of created more expansive courses of like wild women's usually like a two hour experience. And now I've created wild rituals and wild erotic, which is going deeper, which is same sort of aspect, but really fun, really juicy, you know, hour and a half long rituals where we get to go in over and over again in a sort of container of four weeks or five weeks. And my husband and I do the Tantra of life, which is launching February 20th, which is all about communication and polarity and learning how to fight with love and kindness and learning how to create sustainable sexual connection and passion. And it's, it's all sort of under the same umbrella. Johan and I are so deeply passionate about it because we're almost nine years in and it's just the most phenomenal experience I think both of us have ever had. And, and we know that of course it is our particular dynamic, but we have learned these skills that afford us this, this passionate, sustainable, um, beautiful, harmonious relationship. And it's so passionate for us to teach others because we know it's possible, right? It's in the beginning of a relationship, we weren't necessarily using these tools and it was much more challenging. And now that we have them, it's like, we've gone through so much fucked up shit together and it makes us so much stronger. I mean, our foundation is just like rock solid and our expansion level and what we get to do together and experience together is, is, is like incredible. And it is a, it is a learned thing, right? It's mm -hmm. like, there's no formula to our relationship with ourselves, our relationship with anyone else. It's really about finding our own unique way by using all of these tools to continuously come back to ourselves so that we can hear what it is that we really want to say. Beautiful. And I know before we press record, we were talking about Tantra and the definition, or you call it dynamic Tantra. I, I know also on your website, so Tan, Tan, or I don't know how you break it up, but <laughs> it actually means something. Uh, but I'm curious, what is this dynamic Tantra that you're talking about? And I love that you have this with your husband. It's so beautiful. And so I'm curious, is this only for couples or would you say it's just welcome to anybody? Oh yeah, this is welcome to, to everyone. I mean, it's obviously, I think that we are known as this wonderful couple, which is amazing. And we love that and we wanna share these tools, but communication is this, and, and learning these energies in Tantra is a skill that will work for every relationship. And the whole world is based off of our relating. Mm -hmm. So being able to relate to our family, to our business partners, to our friends, to the world as, you know, as this other being. And so the definition that I've really been in love with recently that was uh, expressed by Jamie Wheel from Stealing Fire is, and I might paraphrase in here, but Tantra is really the, the act of using the raw material that arises for our ultimate transformation. And so dynamic Tantra for me is something that I've coined, which is you know getting out of the idea that society thinks Tantra is only about sex. To me, Tantra is about making love to the essence of the universe moment to moment, right? And, and that's what I mean by the, the, the raw materials, like, life is not going to be this this straight streamlined thing there's there's ups and downs because it's designed that way because it's exciting and so dynamic tantra teaches us to be able to exist in here 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 and equate it in in all of it to be an extremely expansive state which is similar to being a master of energy right how do we use what 
has arisen, whether it's adversity or joy, to fuel and um, focus that energy into what we are creating, right? Whether it's in ourselves, in our creative endeavors, in our relationship, in our family dynamics, and letting ourselves really surrender into the essence of what is, right? To bring ourselves back to presence over and over again so that we are at the forefront of what is happening and we can be a part of that versus feeling like, again, we're just in effect of what is. Right. That was so beautiful. Yes, exactly. And so speaking about the sexual energy, when we talk about relationships, how could Tantra or, or, or learning about Tantra for life that you have this offering, how will that help possibly bring back the passion in a relationship that might be a little stag- stagnant? Mm, beautiful. Oh, the, the first thing that arises is in, so um, apparent with a lot of the couples that we're coaching right now, which is this idea of intimacy. And I think that we as a society have an idea of what that means, right? We think intimacy is like flowers and candles and a bathtub and, and like, you know, rose petals and dimly lit room. And that's intimacy. When for me and from my experience and perspective, intimacy is actually created through really challenging moments, through really vulnerable, where we feel deeply exposed. Because this, this energy is specifically in relationships is I'm not going to show this part of me because if I do, they might not love me. And so we sort of carry that around in our day-to-day life all the time in any sort of relationship. We're hiding this part of us and we are energetic beings. We can feel that. We can feel when someone is fully with us and when they're, you know, hiding a part or, or keeping apart something that they feel is scary. There's there is that energy that we can feel whether we're consciously aware of it or not it's felt in our bodies and so intimacy is really created through saying the things using conscious communication that we're afraid to say and to sit in that space and to love each other through all of our moments you know johan has seen me in in every different expression me being and at, like out of my mind, losing my shit in full trauma response, where I feel a part of me feels, oh my God, this is the most ugly, you know, sort of ugh, thing ever. But because I am responsible, because I'm using conscious communication and I'm showing this, he is, he's getting to see me. And in actuality, especially with that dynamic of masculine and feminine energies, that's actually the fire that they're craving. True. They're, they're wanting that wild, untethered, responsible energy. And the same with for the masculine energy, when they are able to be fully present with themselves and their own darkness and their own pain and their own trauma, and to be able to speak to it, it is the most attractive thing because it creates intimacy, it creates trust. And when you have that, the sexual experience is just so much more heightened because really in actuality when we're in that sexual expression we really want to lose our minds we want to lose the mind and be fully immersed in the body so when we lose our mind meaning we're not thinking about that thing i'm not saying or that like how does my boob look or my stomach look at this stuff right when we're naked in front of someone not just physically but spiritually and emotionally and mentally then we can really give ourselves over to that Shakti Shiva, like fiery present combination that is what we're all craving sexually. Mm, it's so true. It's so true. That's how you start to break down the, um, the blocks and, and create more of that intimacy. I think that's so, that's so powerful. And I think a lot of people need to hear that, that your vulnerability is literally the window to everything you kind of desire and really just loving all parts of you, the good, the bad, the ugly, whatever it may be. And every feeling you have, I, I just recently lost my dog. And I, of course, like could, nothing could break me to the ground more, you know, I, nothing could possibly do worse. And my boyfriend was just so, so loving and supportive and just held me in that space. And I really truly felt like you know, that, that to me was intimacy, that, that was a bond knowing that, that a man 
is there to hold you and they, they want to, that's again, that's like the divine masculine. So yes, I, I completely agree. So for anybody that feels they have to hide that vulnerability or that pain trauma, the best way to create a connection with your partner is by slowly revealing that and, you know, holding that, like creating that space to be able to have those commun- those conversations. Yeah. You so know, beautiful. I think the end of the thing that it's so present for me with so many of my clients that I think is so important to speak to is like remembering what we've been saying the whole time, which is we all have masculine, feminine energies mm-hmm. within us. Right. And our men need to be held to, mm. right? There's, yes, of course, women need to be safe, feel safe, of course, that's been, you know, spoken about for so long, and men need to feel safe too, right? We need to be able to switch those polarities in our relationship, right? We, that's what I mean by, we can tell when a man knows his own darkness, which means he's felt his pain, his shame, his anger, his sadness. He's not afraid of it. He's in that vulnerable, exposed state within himself, and he's able to share it with you. That creates such deep trustability. And in order for him to do that, we as women also need to create that space for them. So important that you mentioned that. And then of course, for the men listening, that is just, here's your permission. Like, let let your guard down you know express what you need to express and a woman that is going to be your partner is hopefully going to create that container for you and and welcome that and and that's such a beautiful way to live in a partnership of course so I think that's so beautiful and uh I was going to ask you um so I know, like, I as we mentioned all the offerings you have which are on your website and I know you have a book, which is poetry. Is that right? What's it called again? Sacred erotic poetry. It's called wild open. Oh my gosh. I so want to get my hands on that. So I'll plug that in the show notes, of course, because I'm just, I'm so intrigued by that. And if you were to leave with us in this episode, just to like close off, if you were to leave or give us something to take away that we could start to implement into our lives now to kind of cultivate that divine feminine and reconnect with that wild woman within us. What would you um, leave us with to kind of start to practice? The thing that I, that I always say is becoming your own best friend. And what I really mean by that is consistently create time that is just for you and you to be able to be still with yourself, to be able to be with your pain and your anger and your guilt and your shame and to not judge it, but to just see it as a part of you and and, and allow it to be, be there, right? That's the thing that creates that deeply energetic visceral feeling when you f- meet someone who's done that, you can feel it in them, right? Mm-hmm. So taking that time to make yourself the most important person in the world, because that's really the the forefront, right, of creating our reality, that inner world of coming back to loving ourselves, loving our darkness, giving ourselves a permission to express and dance and move and feel ourselves fully. Every part is going to create a ripple effect into the rest of your life. Beautiful. And probably you probably answered that (laughs) through this, but through my previous question, but if you were to leave a piece of advice, just anything that you could possibly, it could be anything, a life lesson, leave with us, what would that be? If, if we can learn the two things, the most important things I think for myself are to have the willingness to grow in every moment, to carry that willingness throughout the rest of our lives and to learn how to take 100% responsibility for ourselves. That is a superpower that creates constant liberation. That is empowerment, is really owning our part, owning our creatorship and seeing how that literally radically changes our life. Yes, yes, I think that is so true that taking responsibility for anything in your life is empowering, to be honest, because then you have the ability to change the trajectory from there if you choose to. So yes, 
full responsibility is so, so key. This has been so beautiful, Rachel. I am you just uh, how you articulate everything is just so beautiful and it's so inspiring. And if anybody wants to learn more, of course, everything will be plugged in the show notes, all the offering. I know you said February 20th is for the Tantra for Life. Is that what you were saying? Yes, Tantra of Life, February 20th. Perfect. And is any of your programs open for enrollment at any time or are they all, they? We are in the midst of doing a complete website rehaul and that is the future. So in the next few months, probably right around the time that this comes out, it'll be, that's like the next step. (laughs) Perfect. That's so amazing. Well, thank you so much. This is truly remarkable. I am so appreciative for everything you shared today. Beautiful, this is beautiful. Incredible. Yeah. Beautiful questions. Thank you so much for, for having me. It's been such a joy and for all the work that you do for bringing this information to the masses and we're doing this together. Yes. Yes. So good. Thank you so much. Thank you.